to the actual test study guide so y'all can see what it's going to look like. All right, so this first one just wants me to graph it and then choose the picture. So if you graph this on your calculator, I would put that fraction in parentheses like they did. So I would do my parentheses, one divided by four, close parentheses, and then I'd use this little arrow up key to put in my exponents and then I put in my X. So what I want to do is go to the actual screen and let's do this one on paper and then we'll come back and pick our picture. So my problem was Y equals one fourth to the X. So like I said, you would hit your parentheses, one divided by four, close parentheses, use the arrow up key, put in your exponent, and then put in the X. So X is your variable on this one, and it's actually in the exponent spot, okay? So we can hit graph to see the picture. And if you notice the exponential graphs when they're fractions, they want to head downhill left to right, okay? If this was a regular number, it would grow left to right because the numbers would get bigger. So we see what it looks like. So let's go put this in. So y'all, I had what looked like A here. So click A and then you go to your next one. All right, so this is f of x equals 2 to the x minus 2. All right, so on our basic graphs, these 2 to the x, we know that 2 is the base. So you would come down here and put y equals 2 to the x on one of these answers. But we need to know what that minus 2 is doing to the graph. If you remember, anytime you're attacking the x up there, it's gonna go left or right. So since we're subtracting two from the X, these ones go opposite what you think. When you subtract from that X, it actually moves right. So you would come down here to D, since it says it moves right, click that. And in the box, you're not putting the X, all you're doing is putting the two, because the two was the base, okay? So you would do that and then you click on this to graph it. Now it's real important on these graphs. You're gonna click the one that looks like the exponential graph right there and it'll tell you exponential tool. Click that. And then I just come over here at one and click it on the Y axis. Now it's gonna draw a graph, but it's gonna bring this box up. So, when you first start, it's gonna put them all right here in that position. You gotta come over here and tell it what move you did. Well, over here we said we shifted the graph two units to the right. So left and right would be horizontal. And I'm gonna move that to two. So I'm at two and notice it moved my graph for me. Now down here where it says base, this is the most important thing. If you don't change this to a two, it will mark your answer wrong. So backspace that and put a two in there since that was the base we had up here, okay? Save that. And then you're gonna move on to the next. Now I'm gonna say this has 30 on it, but my test actually has 25 questions only, okay? All right, this is what F of X equals two to the X plus three and then minus four. All right, so this one has two moves. The first move is up here with the X plus three. Remember, since I'm adding three, this is gonna go left three units. So it's gonna go left three units. 
And then the minus four, when you got the number at the end like this, it goes up or down. Now, since that's negative, it's gonna go down four. So right here, you gotta come in and we're gonna start with the graph of two to the X. Now we had a plus three here, so we're gonna actually shift it left three units. And then the four was negative, so it'll go down. And then y'all, once again, you gotta click on this and move the graph. So it's still the same graph, the exponential. So just come over here and click somewhere. And it's gonna put my graph in. Oh, hold on now. Let me, let me re-graph because I was putting someone in and I lost my box. All right, so exponential, click it. All right, so I said I went left three. Left three will be horizontal three units. All right, get over there on the three. Down four would be a vertical shift down four. And then remember, this base has to be changed. So that base on mine was once again a two, so I need to put a two in there. All right, y'all, then you would save that and go to the next. All right, let's see. Suppose that, what was that, 83,000? Hard for my eyes to see this. At 6.5% interest, compounded quarterly. So we want to find the amount investment grows after five years. And then B, find the amount of the money. Oh, that was up there. That say T years after T years. Okay, so we're gonna come up with the equation and then we'll find T equals zero, four, six, and 10 years. Okay, so let's switch to screen. All right, so y'all, that one has a formula we need to use. So does anyone remember the formula for this one? All right, so what was it? A equals P, whoops, we got another one coming in. And then remember I had parentheses, one plus R divided by N, all this was raised to the N times T. So remember, P was your principal balance. R is your interest rate. N is the number of compounds a year. And then T represented time. So on this first part, they wanted me to find the formula then I could put in any amount of time and it would give me the amount of my balance. So 83,000, that's my P because that's my starting balance. So I would have my A equals 83,000, then parentheses one plus, R is your interest rate. So my interest rate was six and one half percent that's the same as 6.5%.
right? And you can use the calculator to turn these uh, fractions into decimals. Um, but I can't put percent into the formula. I got to convert percent into a decimal form. So to convert from percent to a decimal, you move the decimal left two units. And since I didn't have nothing here, I would put a zero and then my dot would go in the front or my decimal. So that six and a half percent is really 0 0.065. That's what I got to put into my R, 0 0.065, divided by N. N was the number of compounds a year. They told me right here it was compounded quarterly, so that would be four times a year. So it'll either be quarterly, which is four times, semi-annually would be two times, or annually, which would be a one. All right, then I bring my four out here and my T. So T is actually gonna be the variable for this. It depends on how much time in years goes by before I can find my actual balance. Now y'all, let me show you, Math Lab will not take that answer. They want us to simplify what's inside the parentheses. So on my calculator, I just got to figure out what this part equals. One plus 0 0.065 divided by four. Enter and that's going to equal 1.01625. And then I would bring down the four and the T. This is what Math Lab wants on that problem, okay? Now, if you got it to this point and you forgot to do the final expression, let me know and I can look at it and see if I give you credit or not, okay? Um, but Math Lab is picky and it wants this inside the parentheses part brought into a decimal there. All right, now then for the t equals 0, 4, 6, and 10, I take the formula I just came up with and put a 0 in, figure out that amount, then I put in a 4 and so on, okay? So I got 83,000, parentheses, 1.01625, close parentheses, and then exponent is 4 times zero. Remember, four times zero is one, and anything to the first power is itself. So y'all, at time equals zero, look what I have. I still have $83,000. Well, that makes sense. If no time has passed, I ain't made no money yet, right? So then we would go to T equals four. So the same problem, but make that a four instead of a zero now. Now, we'll say this, if you got the older calculators, when you do exponents, it does like a carrot and a parenthesis. You have to actually do four times zero and close the parentheses. On the newer ones, since it don't give us parentheses, we just put in our exponents and go, okay? So the next one, 83,000 parentheses, 1.01625, close parentheses, and then my exponent will be four times four because I'm doing t equals four this time. And that's going to give me, what, 107,420. And they'll want me to round to the nearest cents. So that's going to be 40, what, that's a six with a five behind it. So the six will turn into a seven. All right, then I got t equals six. And that makes me happy if I was um, investing 83,000 after four years at six and a half percent interest, I'm up to uh, 107,000, right? So this should even get higher. Um, with my bigger numbers. So that's going to be times six now. And that's going to give me 122,000. Two hundred and five dollars and who what's that a seventy one okay y'all and then we got room for t equals ten down here 
So same thing, 83,000 parentheses, 1.01625, close parentheses, and then exponent will be four times 10, which should be even higher. And that looks like I made, what, $158,000. $161 and 30. Let's see, the seven has a six behind it, so that'll be an eight. So that'll be 38 cents. Okay, so the trick on that, just come up with your formula and then use that formula to get the values they want, okay? So I'm not gonna put all of them in there, so. We just worked that out. Um, but notice it does say round to the nearest dollar. Oh, round to the nearest dollar. So I would actually round mine to dollars and not even have cents on them, okay? So heck, let me put this in real quick. Since my answers were rounded to decimals and I need dollars. So here would be the 83,000 parentheses, 1.01625. Close parentheses, and I think I needed the parentheses where that nine is. All right, and then I would use the little exponent key down here and put in my four T. Okay, so that's the formula I want. So let me take all these the amounts I got and turn them into dollars. So my first one would have been 107,000 420 because that was 47 cents after it, so it stayed the same. Oh, hold on, T equals zero. Let me go back. That was 83,000. It stayed the same, right? At four is when we got to 107, 420. So notice they didn't want cents, they want me to round to the nearest dollars. At six, it was 122. Two O. Oh. I had a five, but there's a 71 behind it. So that's going to round to a six. And then y'all at 10 years, I had 158. One, six. Okay, I got a one, but behind it's a three. So it's going to stay a one. All righty, so round those to the nearest dollar. Then, and then we can move on, okay? But that formula is not too bad once you practice it. And um, that's quite a bit of money in uh, 10 years, right? About 30, 40,000. All right, here's Melissa. So Melissa's sixth birthday, so her sixth birthday, she gets a $5,000 CD, 4% interest compounded quarterly. If it matures on her 12th birthday, how much money will be available? So let's go work this. All right, so sixth birthday, she got 5,000 CD, 4% interest, compounded quarterly. It matures on her 12th birthday, how much money will be available? So we're using the same formula. A equals P1 plus R divided by N all to the N times T. We know the principal balance, that's what she started with. That's 5,000. Then we got one plus R. Well, remember that's 4%. To turn that into a decimal, I got to move the decimal twice, two spots. So that's going to make a 0 0.04. Remember, anytime you got a number and the decimal's not there, it's automatically right behind that last number, okay? So that'll give me a 0 0.04. N is the number of compounds. This is quarterly, so that would be four times a year. So divide by the four. And then it's going to be four times T. Well, T is the time. If it matured on her 12th birthday and she got it on her sixth birthday, let's see, 12 minus six would be six years. So that's going to be four times six. 
So your 4% interest getting compounded four times a year times six. So it's in the life of that, it's like it's gonna get compounded 24 times, okay? All right, so let's see what we get. <clears throat> so we can just now punch this in. <clears throat> Ooh, my bad, y'all. So 5,000 parentheses, one plus 0 0.04 divided by four, close parentheses, exponent four times six. All right, business calculus people, you might get to play with these formulas when y'all get in there. So let's see, this is now $6,348.67. So I think it wants me to round to the nearest cents. If not, I'll round to the nearest dollar when I do it. So let's see, what'd she make? About 12 years, they made about 13, 1400 range. So, Decent, but it could have been higher if she'd had a little bit higher interest rate, right? All right, so round to the nearest cent. So this and I will put in everything. I'll do my 6348.67. All right, moving on. All right, find a log. That is a log. 10 of 1,000. So basically, what this problem wants to know is this 10 can be raised to some exponent and equal 1,000. Logarithms find exponents that turn these bases into these numbers. So how many times can 10 be multiplied to get 1,000? Well, let's see, 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. So I did that three times. So the logarithm that we would get out of that would be a three because three is the exponent. I raised 10 to to get 1,000. Now you're on these calculators, you hit math. If you arrow down, you'll see a log base. Hit enter on that. You put the 10 there, arrow right. You put the 1,000 right there. Hit enter and you get a three, okay? So logs are not too bad when you knock them out on the calculators. All right, so that was a three and then moving on. This is log base three of three squared. All right, and you can do that on the calculator, right? Hit the math button, go get that log base. Hit enter. So you put your three in and then the result would be three squared. So square to three. Um, looks just like it, right? Hit enter. We should get that too. Because what happens on this problem, I'll show you real quick. If you remember, I had a power rule that said when I had exponents, I had to bring them down to the front, right? So that gave you two times the log base three of three. Well, anytime a base matches the result, that equals one, because one's the exponent I would raise three to to turn it into a three, right? So this is basically two times one, which gave us two. Okay, so that's why that calculator spit me out of two really quick. All right, so I said, what was that two and then move on. Log base 125 of five. So anytime that base, that 125 is larger than the result, you're going to get a fractional answer, okay? So watch this, punch in math, go get that log base, hit enter. The base is the 125, 
the result is the five. So you got to take roots to turn stuff from bigger numbers into smaller numbers. And fractional exponents represent them roots. If you remember, we had to convert those the other day. So when you hit enter, this should be a fraction. I'm getting point three three three, but remember, hit math and enter twice to turn the decimal into a one third. So that would be what a one uh, divided by three. We didn't see how you did it on the computer. You kept us on the test screen. Okay, I was just uh. I mean, on the calculator. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was just running through it on, on, on talking, but let me show you what I had. Okay. Um, bog base 125 of a five. Um, so what I did is I hit my math and went down to the log base. So have y'all all got your calculator with you? Because if you don't have log base, I can show you another way to do these on the calculator. Um, but if all y'all got log base, I would hit the enter. And then here's where you put the 125. You see how it's little, it's the base. And then I arrow over and put in my five. So this one we said would give me a fractional exponent, but it gave me a decimal as my answer. So anytime you get the decimal and we want fractions, you're gonna hit math and enter twice. And it spits it out as a one third. So I'm assuming all oh, y'all had that log base, right? So I don't have to do it the other way. I actually missed on how you did it on the calculator as I was getting my calculator out. Oh, you want me to say it one more time? Yes, please, sorry. Oh, that ain't bad, because uh, um, you'll see all these that I've been doing here, the log 10 and 1,000, hit math and uh, arrow down until you find that log base. So on mine, it's letter A after, after zero and then I hit enter. So you just have that on it? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so put in the base 125 and then use this button to arrow over and put in your five. So what'd that give you on yours? Did you get uh, uh, 0.3333? Yes. Mm -hmm. So hit the math button over on the left side by the green one. And you okay. see where it says fraction? That means you're gonna turn any answer into a fraction. So hit enter on that twice because it brings it to the screen and then you actually put it in and get to one third. Okay, I got it. But any of them logs that have numbers only can be done with that, okay? All right, let's see. I don't know what that is. I got a communication error. Let me try to move on. I must be having internet issues. Let me try to see what's up. Let me try to see what's up. All right, so that's cool. I got a 
back up, I'm going to. <laughs> so I'm on number nine, right? So I got to back up. So let me spin this to number nine. Oh, one, one, that's the final exam. We don't want that yet, right? We need to test four. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to be down here. We just went through um, some of those that was on that. I took off of this. So I do got the one with the birthday, but I took the one off before it on the test, okay? So let's see. These ones want me to convert to a logarithmic equation. So let me try to zoom in a little. So convert to a logarithmic equation. So that means you want to have your log. The base of the log is the base over here, which is the 10. So that's the base on the log, and then that's the base of the exponential. The result is the 1,000, and that equals the exponent, which is the 3. So when you're in logarithmic form, the base, the result, and then the exponent. Okay, so that 10 to the third equals 8,000. So that's what they want you to put right here. Convert to a logarithmic equation, same thing for number nine. So bring over your log. The base is the E because that's the number with the exponent. The result is the M and that's going to equal the exponent, which was a 4. Now, I would take that answer, or I would take that answer written another way, because a log base E can be written as a ln. That's understood to be a log with an E. And then you can put your M equals 4. So that one I would take either way. So this one I went from exponential to logarithmic. Now they want me to go from logarithmic to exponential. And it's the same thing. Here's your base, which is the five. So bring over your five. The exponent, well, we know the exponent is the two. So five to the second power equals the result, which was a 25. Okay, so these two always go back and forth to each other. You can go from logarithmic to exponential, or you can go from these exponentials to logarithmic, okay? All right, let's see, same thing here. Looks like that's a base A. So A is my base. My exponent is a negative z in a to the negative z equals m. Okay? So remember, in this form, it's always the base, exponent, result. Base, exponent, result. Okay? You just got to get used to those and be able to go back and forth on those, okay? I have a question. Yes. I'm um like on the review or a test that I've done and the end, the only problem I have the issue is at the end. Is there a certain way that we need to put it in? Because I do it yeah. and then yeah. this, this has is, an answer be cool. Uh huh. It's not an N, it's a L N. L N. So use a <laughs> so use a little L and an N. When you put that in right. It makes it real bold looking. It bolds it up like these logs are on here. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's, yeah. And if y'all missed it on the test because you put a capital I or something, I'd probably override it. But yeah, that's what it's doing. <laughs> okay. And, it, and it's 
in the math lab, you really can't tell that's what they're doing to them. So it's, you're like, oh, wow, what happened here? <laughs> mm -mm -mm. All right, so let me come up. So this is the LN of 350.1. And um, they want us to, uh, right here, it says, use a calculator to find the natural log. Well, the natural log is on the front of my calculator, that LN. And it's funny, math lab, we use a little LN, and here they got a big LN. Um, but y'all just punch that in, LN. What's that, 350.1? and hit enter. Now the trick on this, it wants it rounded four decimal places. Okay, so let me show you a trick. If you have trouble rounding stuff, hit this mode button right here. In the very top, we wanna to go down to where it says float. Right now your calculator, that's floating the decimals and it's just putting what it wants. But if you wanna round four decimal places, come over here to the four and hit enter on the four. Now, when I hit clear and I hit enter for that answer, it's going to round it to four decimal places, okay? So that would be 5.8582. So mode, um, by default, it's on float. All I did was go over four units and hit enter, and then I was good to go. Now, it'll stay on four until I change it back, okay? So, um, most of these are gonna want four decimal places, but if you need something longer, like those problems I worked while ago, you wanna go back and set it back on the float, okay? All right, this one says, find a log using change of base. Well, what we wanna do is hit math, go down to log base and hit enter. We put a three and then we arrow over and put in the 17. Now, round the four decimal places, which is already set on my calculator, so I can hit enter and I get 2.5789. Okay, so let me put mine back on float and see. If you didn't set your calculator, you'd have to say, okay, after the nine was a zero, so that stays a nine and I move on, okay? All right, then at 14, we start using some of them properties. So the calculator, not really gonna help me at the moment until I start doing this multiplying. So express as a sum. So you distribute to log five. So you get log base five of five, plus log base five of 25. So express as a sum, if they're a product, you rewrite it as addition, distribute the log and give each of those a log base five. All right, this one said express as a product. So I got log base 10 of Z to the 20th. Well, remember when they said express as a product, they just want me to bring this 20 down to the front of my expression so that I get 20 times log 10 of the Z. It's tricky when you put these in, you gotta remember to go to the little exponent box. So let me see if I can get my excess back on my test. Cause I wanted to show y'all how to actually put these ones in. All right, so it looks like it's doing it now. So I'm gonna skip the ones we just did. So we did these. Oh, come on. And I'm gonna move on. All right, we did all those converting. 
Okay, so we're back to this, y'all. All right, back to my screen. All right, so y'all should be on my pad. So I'm having, I must be having internet issues with my math lab. Uh, hopefully my Zoom is doing good. All right, so this one, rewrite as sums or differences. Well, since these are all being multiplied, it'll be a bunch of sums. You can only have differences when they're being divided like that next one, okay? So what we got to do is distribute that log base D to everybody. So we'll have a log base D of X squared plus a log base D of Y to the seventh plus a log base D of Z. Now, that's correct, but it's not the most simplified answer, and we got to simplify this as far as we can go. So since I got exponents, remember, we're not allowed to keep the exponents up top. So I got to bring both them exponents down so that I get a 2 log base D of X plus a 7 log base D of Y plus my log base D of the Z. So the Z didn't change because it didn't have an exponent, but on everything, if you got exponents up here, you got to bring them down, okay? Oh yeah, the next one's going to be fun, right? Because it's got four things here. So remember what I said on the notes, if it's on top, it's going to be positive. If it's on bottom, it's going to be negative. And I'm going to distribute the log B to all four of these. So your first step would be log base B of P to the fourth plus log base B of Q to the fifth. Those two factors were on top, so they're both positive. Now these two factors are on bottom, so we distribute and make them negative. So minus log B of M to the fifth minus log B of B to the ninth. Now, all these exponents got to be brought down in front of their individual logs. So I'm going to bring them all down. So I get four log B of P plus a five log B of Q, and then the rest are going to be negative, negative five log B of M minus nine. Oh, now look here. Do I want to write that log B of B part? Because remember, the log B of B part equaled one. Anytime the base matches that result, it equals one. So this is really nine times one, which is just going to be that minus nine. So y'all, when you got an exponent that follows that pattern, it's always going to equal that exponent. Now you could have put down log B of B, but you would have had to do the one more step because the log B of B has to equal a one. Okay. So this is what we want right here on math lab and actually they gave me the answers here so let's see four log b of p that's wrong because i got that backwards that's wrong so hell the only one that had the first term right was this one so everything else must be right right five log b of q minus five log b m and then here's my minus nine like we said okay all right moving on So this one says, uh, simplify the expression. So that means write it as a single log and then simplify everything you can. So these are both LNs, so you'd bring over the LN. Since this part's positive, it would be on top, x squared plus 11x 
plus 18. Since this part's being subtracted, the x plus 9 would go to the bottom. But y'all, we can simplify this part. So this is going to equal ln. Put parentheses on top because you're going to factor that top. And then the bottom is what, an x plus 9? You can't do nothing with the x plus 9. So let's factor the top. x squared is an x and an x. 18 is positive. Since that's positive, both of these factors have the same sign as the middle number. Since 11 is positive, both of these are positive. And in fact, there's 18 that equal 11. And I'm betting one of them better be a 9. So 9 times 2 is 18. So let me put a 9 and a 2 here. And 9 and 2 add to get 11. Um, but if you ain't able to factor that right, you're not going to be able to cancel them x plus 9s out, y'all. So that my final answer is just the ln parentheses x plus 2. Okay, so you got to be able to factor this one and cancel the common factors. All right, then that would have been, what, an A on that one. Uh, let's see, same thing on this one, but it's using logs. So look, you got an ln and a log. I just sort of switch back and forth on them. So this would be a log on top, since that's positive, is an x squared plus 2x minus 8. On the bottom, since this is being subtracted, is an x squared minus 16. So let me tell y'all, both of these will factor. Since I got these x squared terms, okay? So the top one I'm gonna play with first. x squared is an x and an x. The eight is negative. Anytime the last number is negative, you got one positive and one negative factor. And then you want to find factors of 8 that will subtract and get 2. So that would be 4 and 2. The larger number, positive like the middle. So since 4 is bigger, we make it positive and the 2 negative. So these numbers multiply to get negative 8. They add to get positive 2. On the bottom is the x squared. So that's an x and an x. The last number is negative. So one's positive and one's negative. And since this don't have an X in the middle, this is perfect squares. So the number you want here and here is whatever the square root of 16 is, and that would be four. So you'd put a four and a four. Factors of 16 that subtract to get zero are four and four, right? But since there's a zero in the middle, we don't have to write that X. All right, and if y'all see my last step, I got, Factor on top cancels with a factor on the bottom. So my final answer would be a log. Uh, what I got on top? X minus 2 over X minus 4. And this one, I don't need parentheses because there's a fraction bar there, and that treats everything like one big term, okay? All right, this was 5 to the 2x equals 125. So if we can get the bases to match, then that means the exponents have to equal each other. So the first thing I do to these, so I'm going to write this problem down. Let me see. I got 5 to the 2x equals 125. So if I can get these bases to match, then the exponents have to be equal. So bring down that 5 to the 2x. And I know I can rewrite a 125 as 5 and an exponent. So let's see. How many times can I multiply 5 to get 125? So 5 times 5 is 25 times 5, 125. So I did that three times. So that would be 5 to the third. 5 to the third, if we punch it in, equals 125. So now, since these bases match, anytime the bases match, 
that means that the exponent 2 times x has to equal 3. Right, because if two sides are equal and their bases are equal, then these exponents have to be equal. Now to solve that, I just divide both sides by two so that x equals three halves. So watch this, five to the exponent, two times three divided by two equals 125. So since that checks, we're good to go, okay? So y'all on that one, I got a three halves. Now this next one has three to the x equals 10. So let me write that one down. Three to the x equals 10. So the first thing I would do is try to rewrite it with that three, but three times three is nine times three 27, so there's no way I can do a 10 with a three, okay? So anytime you cannot rewrite them like this, we need to bring the exponents down. And the way we bring the exponents down is take the ln of both sides. So the ln of three to the x equals the ln of 10. The reason I did that was because now, I can bring my exponent down to the front so that I get a x ln 3 equals ln 10. So x times the ln of 3 equals the ln of 10. So now to get the x by itself, you're going to come in and divide both sides by that ln of 3. Okay, these ln of threes cancel, and that just gives you your x. Now, here's the trick on this one. Notice, when you punch an ln, it gives you a parenthesis. So you got to put in the ln of 10, close parentheses, then hit the divide, then punch in the ln. It'll give you a parenthesis, close that parenthesis. If you do not close these parentheses around these numbers, like I just did that 10, you'll get the wrong answer. And then that was ln of three, close those parentheses, okay? And then I'm rounding this one out about uh, four decimal places. So that looks like a 2.09. Ooh, that five nine is gonna stay a five nine. So I'm gonna make that a 0959. And then that'd be my final answer. Um, but y'all, you gotta make sure you close parentheses if you're using the calculator. All right, so I would punch that in here, 2.09590. Oops, five nine, right? Trying to go too far, four decimal places, one, two, three, four. All right, the next one says, solve for t. So y'all let me write that down. That is e to the negative 0 0.59t equals 0 0.51. All right, so the same thing. I'm not even going to try to attempt to rewrite that using the e. So I'm definitely going to be bringing this exponent down. And to bring the exponents down like I did here, we got to take the ln of both sides. So the ln of e to the negative 0 0.59t will equal the ln of 0 0.51. So what did that do? That brought this exponent down to the front so that you get a negative 0 0.59t times ln of e equals ln 0 0.51. Now y'all, I would be tempted to divide this ln of e out of both sides, but watch this. When I hit ln, and you see that little blue e above the decimal, I mean the divide sign, so hit the blue button and the divide, it puts the e in there and then close parentheses. Watch what this ln of e equals. It equals one. 
because remember, log base E of E, anytime the base matches the result, it equals one. So this part right here equals one. So you really got a negative 0 0.59 T equal to your LN 0 0.51. So anytime something equals one, it's basically you're multiplying it by what is there, okay? Now, to finish this off, to get the T by itself, divide both sides by negative 0 0.59. And once again, you gotta close parentheses around that 0 0.51. So LN 0 0.51, close parentheses, divided by negative 0 0.59 going four decimal places gives me 1.14 1 and let's see that two has a six so that's going to turn into a three so y'all that's the trick on this is just uh i wait really till the very end to mess with these ln's because you don't want long decimals getting drugged down every time. So if you want to keep your accuracy, I always do the LN stuff on my last step. Then I know I don't have no rounding errors and stuff, okay? All right, what's next? Uh, solve for X. Okay, so this, when I got something like a log, I try to turn my logs into exponential equations, then solve them. So watch what I got. Unless I can get a log on both sides and then I can use that log base like I did with the exponent wall go. But watch this. This is four is my base to an exponent four equals two X minus six. So if I was going to rewrite that, that'd be my first step. The base exponent equals that result. So what is four to the fourth power? So four to the fourth, that's four times four times four times four. So that equals 256. So let me put that down here now. So I had four to the fourth equals two X minus six. All right, so I'm gonna work this out real quick. And I did on my calculator, four to the fourth was 256. That's gonna equal two X minus six. And y'all to solve this, I'm gonna add six, get that X by itself. So 256 and six is what? 262 equal to my two X's. And then the final step, divide by two, so that my X equals Let's see, I think that's 131. So 131 equals my X. So watch this. I'm gonna check this answer. I got log base four, two times 131 minus six has to equal four. All right, watch this. Math, go down to that log. Where's my log base? Right there, hit enter. So my base is four, arrow over. I'm gonna put in this, two times 131 minus six, close parentheses. When I am get done, that better equal a four. So that's how I would check them. I just put the stuff back in that I got and see if this thing is true or false, okay? All right, so what I get on that, 131. All right, so here's one. This one has three logs in it, okay? So let's write this one down. It's going to be really nice. All right, let me straighten this up for you. All right, log base three, B plus 14 minus log base three, the B plus six equals log 
base 3 of B. So all these are log base 3s. So anytime you got more than one log on each side, you want to write them as a single log. So I'm going to write as a single log. Um, this right side's already got a single log, so I'm happy. So to write it as a single log, since they're both log base threes, you bring down your log base three. Remember, this part's positive, so it's going on top, B plus 14. This part's being subtracted, so that B plus six goes to the bottom, and then that's going to equal the log base three of my B. So y'all, here's what's happening on this example. This log three matches that log three, right? So log bases match. And anytime the log and bases match, that means that B plus 14 over B plus six, this result has to equal this result, which is the B. So if you can get a log base on each side to match, then that means these parts have to equal. So y'all to solve that, I'm gonna put a one under there first. I'm gonna cross multiply. So on one side of the equals, B plus 14 multiplies by one. So you get B plus 14. That's gonna equal B plus six times the B. Well, B times B is a B squared plus six times B is a six B. So both of these have to multiply by the B when you cross multiply that, okay? All right, now, since I got a B squared, I want everything on one side equal to zero. Now move in mind to the right side because B squared is positive over here, okay? So what you would do, minus the B from both sides, and I'm gonna do mine in two steps, but y'all could have did, uh, what's that, six minus one is five B. But y'all could have did the B and the 14 at the same time. Um, I just do mine in two steps, so that I now got a zero equals B squared plus five B minus 14. Now you gotta factor this or hit it with the quad formula, okay? So I got a B squared, so that gives me a B and a B. Last one's negative, so one's positive, one's negative. You know, you gotta have unlike signs when the last number's negative. And then factor the 14 that give me five. Well, 14 and one is 13, uh, seven and two equal five. Larger number seven is positive like the middle and the two is negative. They add to get five, multiply to get negative 14. Now you gotta do this, set both them equal to zero. So remember, once you got it factored, you're halfway there. Subtract seven on the first one, B equals negative seven. Add two to the second equation, B equals two. But y'all, you cannot put both these answers in math lab. Because watch what happens if I put a negative seven in for the B. Watch this, go to math, grab that log base. Three was the base and then B put in a negative seven. Oh, hold on, let me go back, let me fix my mode so y'all can see this. Oh, it tells you non-real answers. You cannot take logs of negative numbers so y'all seen that? It says non-real answers when you try to take a log of a negative number. See right here, log negative seven. Oops, let's clear this. So watch this, log negative seven, error. Log negative two, error. So if you get a negative answer on a logarithmic, you gotta check and make sure it don't make this part negative. Now negative seven plus six also would have made that part negative. It wouldn't hurt this first part because 14 and negative seven would still be a positive seven. Um, but yeah, this part would have got hurt and then putting a negative seven there. So two, you can take the log of a two 
right? Log of two, it'll take it and give me a decimal. So you cannot take negative answer on that one and the only answer is two. So what you need to do, cross out that negative seven and only put in that positive answer, okay? All right, y'all, one more to go. So notice the difference now, 25, log base two of x plus seven plus log base two of x minus seven equals five. Now I can't use the log base like I did on this one because I don't have a log on both sides, okay? So what I would do, is turn the two logs on the left side into a single log. Make that a single log. So that'll be a log base two. Now notice both of these are positive. So it'll be a x plus seven times x minus seven. All of this equal to the five. Now, remember, all of these are like they're in big parentheses, okay? So now I'll tell you the next step I would do, I would next foil that in the middle. So let's foil x plus seven and x minus seven, and then we'll put that over here. So x times x is an x squared. x times negative seven is negative seven x. Seven times X is a positive seven X. And then seven times negative seven is a negative 49. So you see this in the middle, they cancel. So all that's left is the X squared, those cancel, minus that 49. So you got a log base two of X squared minus 49 equals five. So y'all tell you what I would do next to this is I would rewrite it now as exponential because you can't go no further with this. So you got a base of two, exponent is five, and two to the fifth has to equal the x squared minus 49. So let's see, what is two exponent five equal? So two times two times two times two times two, times two is 32. That's going to equal x squared minus 49. Now I'll tell you what I'm probably going to do to this one since I got an x squared term, but I don't have the x term in the middle. I'm going to take this 32 equals x squared minus 49. And I'm going to actually solve it by taking a square root because I can add 49 to both sides. So 32 plus 49 should be what, 81? So 81 equals the x squared. Now to solve that, I'm gonna take square roots of both sides. And remember, since you're taking the square root of a number out front, you gotta put a plus or a minus so that you get a plus or minus, square root of 81 is nine, that's gonna equal your x. So y'all, let's see, can I take both of these answers? So I ain't worried about the positive one, nine plus seven is 16, nine minus seven is two, so since both of them are positive, putting the nine in, I'm good. Now if I put a negative nine in, negative nine plus seven is negative two, that messes that one up, and then negative nine minus seven is negative 16. Messes that one up because you can't take a log of a negative. So cancel out that negative answer. And the only answer is X equals nine. Wait, so, could you not move the 32 over? Which one? Like back 32. Oh, is y'all not seeing uh, it? No, no, it for the equation, could you not do um subtract 32 from 32 and and um basically add it to the 45 i mean the 49 yeah you could have done the x squared that would have gave you x squared minus uh uh 
what's 32 from uh so that would have been uh 49 would have been negative right and then when you subtract 25 that would have made that a minus 81 equal to zero and then you could have done this way by factoring x plus nine x minus nine okay and then at that point set both of them equal to zero and went on yeah so either oh, way okay. um any of these that are quadratic like that can be factored or if i got a x that's not in them i either do it square root stuff or either way but yeah that's pretty cool y'all see how you can do more ways than one on these right yeah all right so let me go back to the regular screen um So y'all don't wait on that test too long. I would do it either today or tomorrow, okay? Because we got a final exam on Thursday that will be due by midnight Thursday, okay? So tomorrow, all we're gonna do tomorrow is review for that final. And um, y'all wanna really, really, really try to catch up. Catch up. 10 by Thursday. Now we'll drop the two lowest homework grades like I said. And uh and with you and I was trying to fix some of y'all stuff last night when I was seeing errors and stuff. But uh y'all let's stop this recording. <laughs>